Our travels ended in the islands of Orkney. Here we hope to find Aristotle, the world's greatest crossword compiler. I haven't done yesterday's crossword yet. Oh, what with helicopter attacks and sermons. Uh, <laughs> something to look forward to. Do it in bed tonight. Two things for you to look forward to. Is there complimentary shortbread? Ah! Look, the old man of Hoy. You know, the remarkable thing is he used to have two legs, but one of them disappeared. Recently? Early in the 19th century. Nobody saw it go. Here today, gone tomorrow. Just like life. So people tell me. We asked the old man of Hoy about him. He remembered Aristotle well, but not, I suspect, the one we were looking for. Journey's end. Here we hope to find peace. We were seeking a brave new world of gentle tranquility. We asked our higher car man about Aristotle, but he couldn't help us. Neither could the Davidsons at our hotel. They suggested we drive into the town of Kirkwall and ask again. Let's ask these people. No point. They're an alternative theatre company from Guildford. What's the show? The ancient legend of St Magnus. I'd like to see that. Prepare yourself for the enactment of the legend of Magnus and Harkon, and we have the best seat in the house. St. Magnus was a Norwegian like his cousin Harkon. They were joint rulers of Orkney, except Magnus was a good guy, and Harkon was a bad guy. That's Magnus in the gold helmet, the good guy. That's Harkon in the red helmet, mm -hmm. the bad guy. They had a terrible falling out. Magnus tried to negotiate a settlement. What's he doing? Asking for guidance from God, I expect. Harkon refused the settlement. He ordered his standard bearer to kill Magnus, but the standard bearer refused because, after all, Magnus was a good guy. So Harkon ordered the cook to do it. The cook was terrified and went ahead and killed Magnus. I don't suppose you can blame him. Look, it was a terrible murder. There's Hakon taking the crown. And a worthwhile crown to have by the look of it. But at what cost? Poor old Magnus. Sad story. No, Magnus was a happy story. He got his cathedral, and when he was buried, a heavenly light shone across his grave. The Cathedral of St. Magnus the Martyr. I love a good martyr. Tough life being a martyr. But you get your own cathedral. Your dad's mate, the stonemasons of Durham, they made this. Magnus was killed... 11.15. Nothing changes. Since 11.15? Not true. We've had jazz. And the football league. And the hula hoop. And cornflakes. The and... bad guys always get somebody else to do their dirty work for them. 
whoever was flying that helicopter that tried to kill us, it wasn't the chairman of the board. I bet it was the cook. Forget about helicopters. Forget about cooks. We're on holiday. We're supposed to be looking for Aristotle. You don't find things if you look for them. They've done research at Harvard. It's called the underpants syndrome. Relax. Paid your respects to St. Magnus. Indeed, we did. You enjoy the modern stuff. Modern? Oh, yes, anything that's happened since the birth of Christ we regard as a bit newfangled. <laughs> it's a peculiarity of the islands. There's a lot to be said for it. <laughs> now, you mustn't go without your messages. Messages? Your father telephoned, as you said he would, and I told him you were well and happy, as you requested. I've written it all down. Thank you. Your son telephoned. He'd like you to telephone him this evening in connection with corruption in high places. Thank you. And Mr. Baxter telephoned. Baxter? He left no message. Thank you. I think those are all your messages. Did you have any luck with your inquiries concerning your friend? All of the people we spoke to uh, seemed to be incomers to the islands. I'm sure you'll find him. It's another peculiarity of the islands. Progress may be slow, but it's also inevitable. <laughs> and don't be surprised about the incomers. Many of us came here from the mainland. Are you not a true Orcadian? No. I came from the Clyde a long time ago. <laughs> I wanted to be near my father. Lives here. Are you in a hurry? Or may I show you? Please feel free. It won't take many minutes. Scupper flow. Yes. You see the boy? Yes. It marks the position of the Royal Oak. The Royal Oak? British battleship, sunk by a German submarine during the war. On October the 13th, 1939, the loss of 833 men. Your father was... One of the men. Please don't think me morbid. <laughs> Your islands are haunted. We were very comfortable with our ghosts. Quite so. Didn't we pay homage to Magnus this afternoon? And when I go to bed, I look out of my window and say good night to my father. I think that's a nice thing to do, don't you? Yes, it's a nice thing to do. Do you hear him answer? Oh, yes. A peculiarity of the island. I imagine so. Son. We're not supposed to investigate crime. You're under suspension from the police force. Also, you're off duty and on holiday with your male companion. Telephoning my son to tell him I love him. I have nothing against love. Hi. Just a minute. It's for you. Hi, Mum. What? Yeah, thanks. I love you as well. Listen, is there a fax number for that place you're staying? 
guess so. I'll hang on. She says she loves me. Well, that's parents for you. Help you, dear. Yes, do you do you have a fax machine? Oh, indeed we do. And you'd be amazed at some of the things we learn from it. I'm sure. Okay, got that. Right, brace yourself. My word, that's impressive. You should be ashamed of yourself. What are you watching? Simulated sexual intercourse. What's the program? I don't know. Uh, wildlife on one. Hmm? <laughs> World in action. Two-way family favourites. There are listings in the paper. Oh, uh, that's yesterday's paper. Do we look like that? I just hope that Of course not. You're lying in the bed. I'm wandering aimlessly around the room. No, no, no. I mean, when we're doing what they were doing. That's right, sir. We've got four buttocks between us. I dare say they heave in the regulation way. I've never watched. I want to be on top. I like sex better the way it used to be. Has there been some change I don't know about? I liked it better when the boy kissed the girl. And the next thing is all waves lapping on the seashore, or smoke belching forth from a chimney, or train rushing into a tunnel. Oh, you <laughs> sweet old-fashioned thing, you. Mm. Mm. machine has run out of paper. It's more original than, uh, sorry, I've got a headache. But it must take a lot of organising. <sighs> you must remember to put all this on our bill. We'll make a wee adjustment. Oh, don't fret. We enjoy little moments of excitement. In due moderation, of course. We're the same. It appears to have ceased. Oh. Well, a little bedtime reading. Thank yeah. you. I'm oh. deeply grateful. Oh. Good night, Leonard. Good night, now. Uh, hmm. Did you happen to glance at any of those pages? Certainly not. Oh, not did I. But I couldn't help but observe they know some very famous people. They do indeed, though. That'll give him something to think about. You're a genius. Yeah, don't spread it around. Do you fancy watching a video? Yeah, it's great. Jungle Book, tie me up, tie me down. Brilliant. Both. Good. Did you want to know about it? Only because you're my chosen and predestined companion, and therefore I take a keen interest in everything you do. Tell me about your stuff and why it is amazing. The kids have hacked into all the Farquhar Group's computer systems. Details of all the scams, how they operate, names and addresses. You can find names and addresses in the telephone directory. These are strictly ex-directory names. Heavy-duty businessmen, government ministers and civil servants. 
men with knighthoods, masters of foxhounds, merchant bankers, and it's international. Crowned heads of Europe. Not quite, but blood relations of. Power corrupts. Absolute power corrupts, absolutely. Well, you heard what happened to Magnus. Don't you believe in justice? Yes, I think it's an excellent idea. Mm. I don't expect to see it put into practice in my lifetime. You're happy to let these villains get away with it? No. I'm deeply unhappy about it. I'm also deeply unhappy that Baxter probably knows where we are. I'm deeply unhappy that he might send in the helicopters tomorrow. I'm deeply unhappy that our concern for justice might result in our deaths just at a moment when I'm deeply happier than I've ever been in my entire life. Is that true? That was a long speech. I expect I meant most of it. Uh, which bit did, did you have in mind? Deeply happier than you've ever been in your life. Oh, yes, I meant that. That bit was very sincere. I've had good moments, of course. Of my own level results. Uh, my first Duke Ellington LP <laughs> and um, the 1973 Cup Final. Mm. Yeah, I could go on and on, but... Um... All right. I'll forget about incriminating evidence for a while. Go and clean my teeth. And we'll see whether we can summon up the waves lapping on the shore and the express trains. Has that? I could tell you about my first train, sir. Oh. Imagine, every cornflake in the world is identical in size, shape, and taste. Thank you. I know what a cornflake looks like. Excuse me. There's a gentleman who'd like to speak to you. Is his name Baxter? No. I'm quite sure his name's not Baxter. I'd like to meet a gentleman who isn't called Baxter. Very much. Well, I'll ask him to come in. Are we expecting company? My name is Mr. Gunn. I think I might be able to help you. I called on my way to work, which is why I'm in my working clothes. My card. Mr. Gunn is an undertaker. I was going about my business in Kirkwall last evening, and I was told you'd been inquiring for a man named Aristotle. Yes. Do you have half an hour to spare? Yes. Then I believe the best thing to do is to show you and let you be the judge. Thank you. Uh, would you mind? Traveling in my car. I know where we're going, you see. You could follow my car in your car, but uh, that might cause embarrassment. I'm sure we'd be happy to travel in your car. It would be a new experience for both of us. There's plenty of room for three of us.
this is what I wanted you to see. Mary Scott. A woman. Indeed. And a fine-looking lady, too. You knew her? Only in my professional capacity. Do you know anything about her? I know that she moved to the island about a year ago. She lived alone. When she died, she left instructions in her will that her headstone should carry only her name, dates, and a quotation from Aristotle. In the English, of course. It was an unusual request, unique in my experience. That is why I contacted you. Does she have family on the island? No. Two children on the mainland. They were here for the funeral. She was an incomer. Like so many of us. You too? My family came here from Scotland during the Highland clearances. We have begun to settle in. Poetry is of graver import than history. I shall have to think about that. Make a change from cornflakes. That is all I have to show you. I hope it has been of help. Thank you, yes. I appreciate it. I will drive you back to your hotel. Then I must go about my business. May I ask another small favour? We are always happy to perform small favours. A peculiarity of the island. We like to think so. Is it different in London? We don't live in London. We've never lived in London. We rely on the television for our information. According to the television, the mainland of England appears to be London. <laughs> what is the favour? Would it be permissible for you, professionally speaking, to give us Mary Scott's address? The house is empty and for sale. There would be no harm in your looking at it. You wish to pay homage? Yes, we wish to pay homage. And so you shall. Sorry? Well, you travelled all this way and Aristotle is dead. I came to pay homage. That's what we're doing. Assuming Mary Scott was your Aristotle. Oh, I agree, yes. That's still a question, Mark. Hey, what about the crosswinds? There was an Aristotle crossword in the paper yesterday. She probably left a stockpile. Imagine. The greatest crossword compiler of our time. I lived in this little house. In this wee house. Peedy. What? The Scots say we. The Orcadians say Peedy. Found in the burnt out cottage in Wales. There he is. Happily reunited. Our travels now are ended.
That wasn't there before. We could peep. And then put it back uh, neatly and carefully. Well, go on. It says Italian Chapel, 2 p.m., Baxter. What do you think? I'd like to see the Italian Chapel. What about Baxter? We could take the usual precautions. Well, like staying well away. We could tell the hotel where we're going and then say, uh, if we're not back by three o'clock, inform your father and the UN Security Council. I thought you were sick and tired of me being a police person. I came here on a quest. And my quest is at an end. And I want you to pursue your quest. If it makes you happy. Thank you. And provided it doesn't render both of us deceased. Something wrong? Don't know whether you're going to call up your helicopters. Don't worry, I'm alone and unarmed. I'm also a devout Catholic, and this is holy ground. Wasn't Al Capone a devout Catholic? Shush. There's nothing to be frightened of. We were dive-bombed in Scotland. I'm afraid things got a little out of control. They're now under control. My control. Is that good? You two are my sole responsibility. No, you haven't answered the question. Do come in. The frescoes are lovely and warm. Isn't this a gem? It's all the work of a man called Domenico Chiuchetti. An Italian prisoner of war. You know the story? It was built during the war, by prisoners of war. The military authorities gave the prisoners a couple of missing huts to use as a chapel. Keoketti did all this. And then in 1960, he returned to the island to restore his work as we see it now. I need you to restore my work. You're not a painter, you're a piano player. Not that work, my security work. Is there something wrong with your security work? It has sprung a leak. I believe you two are the leak. I believe you have acquired information which from my point of view, from the point of view of the people I work for, and most of all, from your point of view, is lethal. Lethal. In its precise dictionary meaning, causing death. The altar's made from concrete. The screen from scrap metal. He had other people to help him, of course, the good Kiuketti. A cement worker, a smith, two electricians. It was a cooperative effort. So, shall we cooperate? Follow their example? What form of cooperation? Give me your lethal information. What do we get? Well, I hate to sound like a second-rate gangster, but you get to live. It does sound a little second-rate when you hear it like that. And it's deceptive, because whatever else I am, I'm not second-rate. Do you know the legend of Harkin and Magnus? I do. Well, if we are Magnus, are you Harkin, who ordered the execution? The standard bearer, the good guy, 
who refused to carry out the order. Or the bad guy, the cook, who did as he was told. It depends on the company I'm keeping. I may be all three. As far as I'm concerned, you can have your lethal information. I'm sick of it. So, shall we say four o'clock at the barrier ships? He'll be there. That's an interesting piece. Made out of concrete, on a framework of barbed wire. Fascinating. I suppose you're going to tell us there's a moral to that. Beauty is impossible without strength. I wouldn't dream of suggesting such a thing. This one is wasted on Baxter. <laughs> but, oh, Dobell's, famous jazz record shop, now closed. Recession victim. Another homage? What else is there? <laughs> Why do you think I'm doing this? Because of that nasty man. The life and work of W.P.C. Priest. Two minutes. Starting from now. The work is less important than the life. And the work is in this bag. The life is in this room. Me? I call it predestination. I'm paying homage to you. What's wrong? This is an ideal place for another helicopter attack. History doesn't repeat itself. Except when things happen twice. Thank you. The bells. It isn't my best one. That's at home. If the man remembers Dobell's, he can't be all bad. I wouldn't bet on it. <laughs> Please. search the place first Tuesday in the month. Hi, fellas. All right, if you have a look around. Who's this? Michael, he's crashing here for a few days. Another computer whiz kid? No, I'm a geologist and my mother's in the police force. Sure. And I'm the Secretary of State for Scotland. We're told you've been up to your old tricks. Again. Me? I can't even change a fuse. There don't seem to be any buttocks tonight. You any good at anagrams? It's because I'm good at anagrams that we're here. Do you think they know anything about all your hacking and faxing? Big Brother is watching us, but he is also thick as pig shit. Still, I better ring my mum. Tell her we've been raided.
It's your turn. See if you can find any. Right. Oh. Hello. Hi. Mum? Centers on the connection your son. between a land oh, good. deal and the murder of a Welsh farmer. You talk to her. The killing of Mr. Griffiths, a she local says, farmer, has baffled the police uh, for almost a year. To Today's arrest of two men, stated to be employees of a security organization, was, according to a police spokesperson, the result of a tip off. That report from Gillian Saunders in Brecon. A police spokesman refused to comment on reports linking the murder of Mr. Griffiths with investigations by the Serious Fraud Office into the Farquhar Group of Companies. Baron Kite of Kirklevin, the chairman of the Farquhar Group, was not available for comment today. But 19th Hole Developments PLC, part of the Farquhar Group, is one of the companies accused of operating illegal land development schemes. They have denied acting improperly. The arrest of a third security officer in Gates Head earlier this morning has also been confirmed as part of the investigation. The officer, who's not yet been named, worked for Cosmos Security PLC, also part of the Farquhar Group. He's been charged with the murder of Adrian Walsh, a retired property developer from the Northeast. Today's developments are part of a far-reaching inquiry. Do you fancy a few days' holiday? Home Secretary wow. and already referred to the Department of Trade and Skiing? Industry. The fallout from well, the inquiry is completely far-reaching. Well, tell them we were misinformed. What? It's a reference. Oh. Casablanca. There's never any snow in Casablanca. Do you know what I am? I am the classic example of a man who could not make up his mind. I know that one. Mm -hmm. It's Hamlet, isn't it? Flights of Angels. Dizzy Gillespie. The Thirteen Barons. <laughs> Chinese boxes. <laughs> the Kite Dynasty. <laughs> Comrade Baxter. A gentleman on the telephone would like to speak with you. Did he give a name? He said his name is Aristotle. What? Mm -hmm. I wonder what he wants. Since Aristotle's a dead woman called Mary Scott, I imagine he wants mouth to mouth resuscitation. In a sex change operation. I'll ask. Oh. Aristotle? No, that's impossible. Aristotle's dead, both of them. We'll see. We're meeting him in an hour. Finish your crossword. I can't do it. Bring it with you. Police have just issued a statement that Baron Kite was arrested as he was leaving Heathrow Airport with a female companion. Also assisting police with their inquiries are a superintendent of police, two former civil servants from the Ministry of Defence and several city bankers. As yet, no names have been released. Westminster sources have denied rumours that senior cabinet ministers are involved in what some sections of the media are now calling Farquhar Gate. More news on the hour, every hour. Society is being cleansed and you'd rather do a crossword. But they've arrested the 13th Baron. It's fascinating. I have a theory. I think Mr Baxter is doing the cleansing. Where are we? Almost there. Almost where? The Ring of Brodgar. That's it. That's the answer. Oh. Ring of Brodgar. A stone circle. Your dad would love this. How old? 5,000 years. Does anyone know what it was for? Homage, I expect. 
Religious. If you make anything this big, it's bound to turn out religious. Think of Lords, or Headingley, <laughs> or Wembley. Awesome. Yes? Yes, it is. Why aren't you under arrest or assisting the police with their inquiries? Why should I be? Everybody else is. We heard it on the news. Farquhargate. I think Mr. Baxter is the police. He is the inquiries. Correct. And your information was crucial. I won't ask you where you came by, but it helped us spring the trap. I'm deeply indebted. So you've been one of the good guys all along? Relatively speaking, relatively good. The honest cop working undercover for the villains. I always wanted to meet one of those. Well, you remember the legend of Hakon and Magnus. Well, I'm the honest standard bearer who refused to strike the fatal blow. What about the helicopter? Too many cooks. And if we'd been killed? I'd have sent flowers. I'm told you can't cleanse society of all evil without breaking a few eggs. Are you going to cleanse society? The odd gutter, no more. We won't touch the grey men and their tall towers. We'll put away the hoodlums. Perhaps one or two medium-range fall guys. The poor old 13th barn, he'll get a nominal year in a soft nick with full remission and early parole. They'll sell the serial rights to a posh newspaper. But the grey men in the tall towers? Their towers are too tall. Remember Hacken? He inherited the earth. He stole the earth. Inheritance, theft, they look very similar to the naked eye. We're very grateful to you for your full and frank explanation. But you must excuse us. Uh, we have another appointment. With Aristotle. <laughs> I am Aristotle. You? I inherited the name from my mother. I believe you visited her grave. Mary Scott was your mother? She emancipated herself early and never changed her name. But I used to write to her. I went to her cottage in Wales, and it was all in ruins. It was set on fire. See, like you, she had an inventive and lateral mind. No use in a straight line, but brilliant sideways. She stumbled upon the local aspects of what was going on. The Griffiths murder, the corrupt superintendent of police. So they set her house on fire. I was angry about that. I decided to do something instead of waiting for my pension. Nothing to do with cleansing society. I decided to be revenged on the pack of them. The crosswords, are they hers or yours? I'm taking over slowly, with respect. I dropped in the odd clue about the Baron and the like to tempt you up here, but I was really paying homage to my mother. It's all about homage, isn't it? Listening to the ghosts. Listen. The lost tribes from the mainland, paying homage to the solstice. Celestial light with healing properties. You believe that? We believe what we want to believe. We walked away into the sunset. It seemed the proper thing to do. After so much excitement, we needed solitude and silence. You need silence to listen to your ghosts. As a very great man almost said, attention must be paid to our ghosts.